A very good day to everyone. My name is Shubhashish and I am presenting the work entitled A Point of Care Sensor for Milk Adulteration Detection. Uh, milk adulteration is a huge problem in the third world countries uh, where the demand is uh, high and the supply is less. Uh, due to this, some unscrupulous milk supplier instigated to add uh, contaminants to milk to gain more profit. And they are adding water, chemicals uh, to make adulterated milk samples. As we all know, milk is one of the best nutritious food uh, which have different ingredients like uh, vitamin, protein, etc. So it is important uh, to test the milk sample uh, before consumption. So we want to uh, solve the problem of uh, easy detection of uh, milk adulteration in resource limited settings. Uh, so, as I already told about the third world countries, uh, other than these, uh, other countries also face the problem, uh, like in 2008 Chinese milk scandal, where thousands of children were affected uh, due to the consumption of uh, adulterated milk samples. And after that, it, after that, it is spread uh, uh, through the developing countries like India, Pakistan, Brazil, Bangladesh, etc. Uh, which are contributing uh, like more than 30% of the worldwide milk production. So this is the current uh, status in India. So this is a report from Food Safety and Standard Authority of India, where they have reported in 2019, 41% uh, of the uh, milk samples are adulterated. And uh, uh, these are some uh, recent uh, news as about the uh, milk adulteration in the country. Uh, here you can see the milk production uh, and the per capita availability uh, rate every year. So uh, to uh, fulfill the huge demand of this uh, huge demand of this population, the milk production rate should be increased every year. These are some uh, existing techniques or devices and some research work to detect milk adulteration. So in industry, they are using a costly machine called FT1 or Milko screen to test the milk samples. Uh, governments also have taken some initiatives like lab on a wheels or mobile lab so that uh, they can go to the remote areas to test the food samples. And then uh, a uh, few researchers have performed the paper-based polarimetric test for uh, liquid food adulteration detection, like uh, milk, alcohol, and uh, water samples using the uh, spot test analysis, polarimetric spot test analysis. Uh, so, uh, but there is a gap because these uh, devices are not available to the uh, household persons. So, and also in rural areas, they are not able to use it uh, personally. So our main motivation is to provide or is to develop a, a device which can be used by every household person uh, to test their uh, food sample before drinking. So consumers are taking the milk sample from the shop or from farmer or vendors and then uh, in this process they can at least test for some uh, primary chemicals reagents which are very much uh, harmful for their uh, health using this device. So our uh, main objective is to uh, uh, make a, a prototype uh, to detect food and alteration, uh, not only for milk, as well as for water, uh, fruit, juice, uh, uh, protein shake, etc. And uh, it can give uh, multiple adulteration detection uh, simultaneously, then as well as quantitative detection using a mobile app. And also uh, our main aim is to develop a point of care device, which will be low cost, easy to use, and can be useful for uh, every household person. So uh, this is the uh, experimental setup where we used a movable stage uh, uh, for uh, holding the paper device. We used a syringe pump to supply the uh, sample so that we can know the volume. 
we use a LED light source to make a constant brightness. Uh, and uh, with a camera, we are capturing the uh, images. Uh, so in this study, we showed uh, the detection of three uh, chemical adulterants called uh, hydrogen peroxide, boric acid, and maltodoxin. So why we choose this adulterant? Because these are listed in the mostly found adulterants uh, in the FSSI. Uh, and these adulterants are used in milk uh, for different purposes, like for preservation purposes, uh, for uh, uh, increasing the density of the diluted milk, etc. And for this adulterant, we choose some uh, colorimetric reagent so that uh, after reacting with this uh, uh, reagent, this adulterant should give some uh, color change. And uh, after the reaction, uh, uh, if uh, it is uh, positive for H2O2, then uh, in the detection spot, white color uh, converted or appear uh, a brown color. And for boric acid, yellow uh, appear orange color. And for maltodoxin, dark brown color uh, converted to uh, bluish chocolate color. Uh, so after that, uh, here uh, we have showed the uh, colorimetric uh, uh, reaction uh, for hydrogen peroxide. So here you can see with increasing the concentration. So these are the volume by volume percentage for uh, H2O2. So 0.05% to 1% we have performed the experiment. And uh, uh, for after, after some uh, concentration, there is a, a visible color change. Uh, in the detection spot. So uh, the limit of detection is varying from in the range of 0.1 to 0.3 percent. And uh, you can see here we plotted the uh, color intensity curve. So where uh, uh, you can easily uh, see that with increasing the concentration, is 2 to concentration, uh, the color intensity is also uh, increasing. And from this, uh, uh, color intensity curve, uh, further we perform the uh, quantitative analysis. And uh, after that, we perform the same uh, experiments for boric acid and as well as for uh, maltodexin. So uh, in every case, we found that, uh, that with increasing the concentration of the adulterant, the color intensity, the particular color intensity is also uh, increasing. Okay, so now this is the, our uh, conceptual uh, prototype uh, design where we make a, a compact uh, uh, paper based uh, 3D microfluidic device. So this is the compact uh, device uh, where uh, there are two cover to protect it, uh, top cover and bottom cover. And in the top cover, there is a hole from where we can uh, add the uh, sample. And in the middle, the 3D paper based microfluidic device is there. So, where in the top layer is the transportation zone, and in the uh, bottom layer is the detection zone. So, uh, to uh, 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 make it a uh, 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 compact structure, we add uh, in the middle a plastic layer to support the both the paper. And we use uh, using glue, we adjust this paper in the plastic layer. And uh, why we make it a 3D structure? Because of uh, 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 making it less, uh, 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 to make a, uh, make a chance of less cross contamination of these uh, uh, reagents. And in the bottom layer, we, uh, uh, we will provide a manual where uh, it is given like for which adulterant, what color will appear. So this is the conceptual uh, prototype design. And uh, using this prototype, we have performed a simultaneous uh, test. So here you can see the images before uh, and after the uh, experiment. So this is uh, before experiments so where the reagents are already uh, stored in the detection. Uh, zone for boric acid, S2 to and maltodextin, and one is controlled. There is no reagents is uh, available. And after the reaction, the control is the same color. There is no color change. But for uh, this uh, other detection zone, there are uh, some color change happen. Uh, and so uh, uh, for uh, 
characterizing the flow path so uh, yeah so to improve the velocity uh, of the liquid uh, of the liquid uh, we make some changes in the device so at first we uh, take the plastic whole plastic and uh, uh, add it with glue in the paper uh, but after that we modified it we uh, we make some cuts in the plastic and only in the side boundary we add the plastic so what we found is so here we uh, showed as a three cases type one type two and type three so type one is only pure paper and type three where the whole the plastic whole plastic is there and type three uh, there is a cut in the plastic so what we found is uh, in case of type 3, the velocity is almost similar uh, for pure paper case, like type 1 case, so that we uh, make some uh, cuts uh, in the plastic and make our uh, device. And uh, these are some uh, comparison with the existing uh, work with our uh, with our present work. So in this work, uh, we did not uh, make uh, any hydrophobic coating steps. So normally in paper-based microfluidic device uh, uh, for making the hydrophilic channel, hydrophobic uh, coating step is required. But uh, in this work, uh, we just simply cutting our uh, paper device with our desired shape. So we skip the uh, making of hydrophobic barrier steps. And also we are getting a, a similar range of uh, limit of detection and here no energy is required and is, it is a small device easily portable and uh, uh, the quantitative analysis also we are performing and also multiple adulterants tests can be performed in this device and uh, it is easy to use like everyone can uh, use this device uh, easily okay thank you